Hi, I'm Dr. Michelle Meidelman Kennedy with Treble Health, and today I'm going to be discussing the three main causes of tinnitus. While there are many different causes of tinnitus, we are going to be breaking them down into three general categories. This is one of the reasons why it can be really difficult to treat tinnitus because there are so many different causes and factors, and you have to take that into account when you're providing treatment and identifying which tools and resources are going to be most effective for you. The three main causes of tinnitus are cochlear, central, and somatic. A cochlear cause of tinnitus means that tinnitus is coming from hearing loss or damage to the cochlea. A central cause of tinnitus means that it's due to factors that are more psychological, so things like stress, anxiety, depression, sometimes even cognitive factors can play a role. And the third and final category is somatic, sometimes also referred to as somatosensory. This means that there is a physical reason behind why someone is experiencing tinnitus. So for example, they may have had an injury to either their head or neck, or maybe they've had extensive dental work completed recently prior to the onset of tinnitus. I'm going to be giving an overview of these three causes but something that I find really interesting is that oftentimes individuals who have tinnitus are going to present with more than one cause. So you can have tinnitus that is the result of having both a cochlear root as well as a central root. Knowing the cause of one's tinnitus is really helpful, not just for you as an individual, because it helps you better understand what happened and what is still happening to have you be affected by your tinnitus, but as audiologists, it helps us be able to provide you with a more detailed and personalized plan to give you the set of tools that are most appropriate for helping you improve your tinnitus. So the first cause is cochlear. Cochlear refers to tinnitus that's coming from issues within the cochlea, which is also referred to as the inner ear. This is the part of the peripheral auditory system that's responsible for converting the sound waves into electrical signals that are later processed and perceived by the hearing nerve and the brain as sound. If there's any kind of damage or distortion that's occurring within the cochlea, that can lead to mixed and incorrect signals, nerve signals, that are then perceived as sound. Some of the key mechanisms behind why someone will have tinnitus that is of cochlear origin is that they have damage to their hair cells. So within our cochlea, our inner ear, we have two types of hair cells. We have outer hair cells and inner hair cells that are very important for us to be able to perceive a wide array of sounds. So as humans, we can perceive sound between 20 hertz, which is a very, very low pitch sound, all the way up to 20,000 hertz, which is a very, very high pitch sound. And we have hair cells within our cochlea that help us pick up and hear these different sounds. But when they get damaged, they're not able to properly send the signal up to the brain. This can lead us to hear phantom auditory signals, and that's essentially what we hear as tinnitus. So if there's any damage, even slight, to some of the hair cells, our brain is not only receiving less sound input, but it's also receiving inputs that are not accurate they may be hyperactive or hypoactive, and these signals then are getting misrepresented by our central auditory system or our brain, to put it into simple terms. And this spontaneous activity is what is causing us to consistently hear tinnitus. An individual who has tinnitus may go and have a hearing test and be told, your hearing is normal. Sometimes being told your hearing is normal is an overgeneralization based on one's age. There are some professionals who will say, oh, your hearing is normal for your age, or your hearing is normal and yet you may still have some hearing loss at some of the frequencies that were tested. One of the more common types of hearing loss that contributes to tinnitus is noise-induced hearing loss. This can come from prolonged exposure to loud noise as well as single event exposure to very loud noise. So if you were to shoot a gun for the first time without using hearing protection, that can cause you to have permanent noise-induced hearing loss, which can also then lead to tinnitus. The other most common cause of hearing loss that's also linked to tinnitus is age-related hearing loss, or presbycusis. 
This is essentially high frequency hearing loss. The other more common cause of tinnitus when we're looking at cochlear roots are ototoxic medications. There are certain medications that are known to cause permanent and or temporary damage to the auditory system. And so if you are taking a known ototoxic medication, you may want to consider asking if there is an equivalent substitute that you could take or a different type of dosage that may not have such an effect on your tinnitus and hearing. But in some events, you just have to take the medication because it's the only thing that's available. And in a lot of the literature, you'll come across that aspirin is ototoxic. And so many individuals that I've worked with have been hesitant to take aspirin. If you take it under normal circumstances, an appropriate dosage amount, you are not going to cause any kind of permanent damage to your cochlea, to your hair cells that can lead to tinnitus or hearing loss. But if you start to take an amount that is exceeding the recommended dosage, that's when the aspirin may actually start to have an effect on your auditory system and be ototoxic. Another common cause of co the cochlear type of tinnitus is Meniere's disease. Meniere's disease is a disorder of the inner ear that affects both hearing and balance. And what basically is happening is fluid is building up in the cochlea, causing pressure to build, and this can lead to symptoms of tinnitus, hearing loss, oral fullness, vertigo. Because of this fluid pressure that's building, oftentimes it's recommended that individuals who are suspected of having Meniere's disease be on a low sodium diet or take a diuretic pill to help reduce fluid retention. And so if you are suspected of having Meniere's disease, those are appropriate things to try. But if you don't have Meniere's disease, you don't have to be very vigilant as to how much salty foods you're eating on a daily basis. Of course, eating a healthy diet is always recommended and is going to help you in many ways and may also play a role in tinnitus. But for those who don't have Meniere's disease, um, a low caffeine, a low sodium diet isn't absolutely necessary to help improve your symptoms of tinnitus. There are also times that individuals can have an actual viral insult or inflammation, infection that affects the cochlea and it can cause individuals to have hearing loss, tinnitus, vertigo, combination of those. So many times people will have these quick onsets of tinnitus or hearing loss, vertigo, and it really is because of some kind of cochlear inflammation or infection. And so if you are experiencing this, it's really important that you go to see an ENT or an otolaryngologist as soon as possible so they can evaluate you and provide you with treatment to help reduce the inflammation and infection. And this can oftentimes then lead to a reduction and an improvement of tinnitus and or hearing loss, as well as dizziness symptoms if those are present. The second main cause of tinnitus is called central. So tinnitus can be triggered or influenced by a lot of different psychological causes. And it's not necessarily because of any kind of physical issue in the ear or brain, Although, as I mentioned earlier, you can have more than one cause to your tinnitus, but it's really coming from mental health factors like stress, anxiety, depression, or any kind of trauma that you're going through. So how psychological causes can be triggers for tinnitus is that when a person is stressed, their body goes into a fight or flight state, and this response can become overactive. It can lead to muscle tension, changes in blood flow, we start to have, you know, our nervous systems just kind of like on high alert constantly. And these physiological responses can also affect our auditory system. It can cause us to have tinnitus for the first time, or it can actually increase tinnitus. Some patients that I've worked with will tell me that they had what was an acceptable amount of tinnitus prior to having a very stressful period in their life. And all of a sudden their tinnitus has kind of like skyrocketed it's fluctuated to a level where now it's almost impossible to ignore and affecting different aspects of their life. So you can have your tinnitus increase or worsen or start for the first time. And anxiety in particular can cause a person to have increased awareness of their environment as well as what's going on inside of their body. So they're gonna be more attuned and sensitive to the sounds that they hear in either their ears or their head 
And it's a spiral or the cycle that starts to happen where they feel anxious or stressed. Depression can also be a risk factor for those who have tinnitus. Individuals who are feeling depressed often have an increase in negative emotions that make them even more aware of their internal sensations like their tinnitus and their depression makes it a little bit harder for them to make do with it, learn to kind of cope with it, try to not have some of these negative thought patterns like overgeneralizing or catastrophizing that because they're experiencing these feelings and these thoughts in this moment that that's how it's always going to be from here on out. The final cause of tinnitus is somatic or somatosensory and somatic tinnitus refers to a type of tinnitus that is influenced or modulated by physical movements. So these can be muscle contractions, the head, the neck, the mouth, the jaw. It can also come from different extremities and sometimes even ocular eye movements can cause tinnitus. It is believed that this type of tinnitus is related to musculoskeletal issues or problems with the nervous system that affects these different areas of the body. So again, like the jaw, the head, the neck. There are different characteristics of somatic tinnitus that help one distinguish between a central or a cochlear cause of tinnitus. So individuals who have somatic tinnitus tend to have tinnitus that can change in either pitch or frequency, volume, or even make them feel as though their tinnitus is shifting in where they're perceiving the sound based on their head, neck, or jaw movements. It's often that the tension around these muscles in the head, neck, or jaw, or manipulating those parts of the body, you can do that sometimes by just like pressing or applying pressure to different parts, can then change the overall quality of the tinnitus. It might make it louder or softer. So if you're able to do that, then that leads us to believe that you have a somatic component to your tinnitus. But again, not everybody can change the way their tinnitus sound by doing any of these like physical manipulations. Somatic tinnitus is often related to physical trauma. So like a car accident where an individual may have had whiplash or prolonged and consistent poor posture. Another common cause of somatic tinnitus is temporomandibular joint disorder, commonly known as TMJ. So issues with the jaw joint or the mandible can cause tinnitus because of the close proximity that it has to the ear there are shared nerve pathways. There's also a portion of the central auditory system called the dorsal cochlear nucleus, which receives information from both the auditory and motor nerves. So those two systems link up there, and if there is any kind of like physical trauma or injury, it can be sending those signals, which then get also interpreted by the auditory system. We can also have inflammation in those parts of the body that can lead to symptoms of tinnitus. Muscle strain or spasms, tension in those parts of the neck or head or upper back can affect the blood flow and the nerve signals from the ear and also lead to somatic tinnitus. So you can see that if you are able to manipulate your tinnitus through physical movements and you can think back to a specific incident or maybe there is something that you're consistently doing physically that may be causing extra strain, pressure, or stress on a part of your body, there may be then a somatic cause to your tinnitus, which means that treating those physical issues can also help improve the tinnitus. So oftentimes, if it's someone has a somatic cause of their tinnitus, it's recommended that they go to see a dentist who's maybe specialized in TMJ to see if they have TMJ. And if they do, then they may receive treatments for that that can help influence and improve their tinnitus. If their issue is the result of having had some kind of like physical accident, then going to see a physical therapist or a chiropractor may be helpful. Exercises at home that can help loosen the muscles and the ligaments in your head or neck can be of use as well. So there's a lot of different things that can be recommended for those that have somatic tinnitus and those recommendations wouldn't be the same if 
someone only had a cochlear central cause for their tinnitus. So now that you know the three main causes of tinnitus, it's really important for me to share that there are some tools and techniques that help work across the board for individuals who have either of those causes or maybe a few of those causes altogether. One of the treatments that really helps individuals with tinnitus is sound therapy or enhancing your listening environment. Trying to create an environment that's filled with different sounds or just one sound that you find soothing and pleasant to help kind of like mix with your tinnitus, help you notice it less. There's different ways to use sound therapy we here at Travel Health really recommend the use of maskers because they're a lot easier for individuals to use throughout their day, but you can start using anything that you have at home, whether it's your phone or a Bluetooth speaker, to start listening to sounds to help kind of take the edge off of the tinnitus. Another thing is trying to figure out what it means to you. So why is it a problem? Are you having difficulty sleeping? If so, then you should try to figure out what you can do either on your own or with the help of a professional like us here at Trouble Health, what things might be helpful for you to have an easier transition falling asleep or staying asleep. So that might mean adding in some meditation before you go to bed or making sure you're using sound therapy while you're going to sleep. Maybe you have to use different types of mental distractions and focus exercises to help keep your mind off of tinnitus and retrain your brain to no longer seek it out or perceive it. For individuals who have hearing loss underlying either cochlear and or central cause for their tinnitus, treating the hearing loss through the use of hearing aids is one of the best ways to also treat your tinnitus because giving yourself more access to sounds, giving your brain more stimulation often helps reduce the overall perception of tinnitus. Personally, when I work with a patient, I try to identify what it is that may have caused their tinnitus and what it is that is keeping their tinnitus alive, so to speak. Like, why is it still an issue? And identifying those factors to help figure out which tools would be most appropriate for them. So if there is a lot of central causes behind their tinnitus, we have to identify what it is that they are consistently thinking or feeling and try to find ways to alter it so that it is more neutral and they are better able to habituate to their tinnitus over time. It takes time and it isn't easy, but it's absolutely possible to improve your tinnitus. And I think finding the overall cause of your tinnitus is the first step. I, I want to stress that outside of generalizing what the overall cause of one's tinnitus is, it's not necessary to figure out exactly what it was. So for example, if you got sick and you were given a multitude of medications to take and shortly thereafter you started experiencing tinnitus, you don't have to pinpoint whether it was this medication or this medication or whether it was actually like the virus that you had. Those things aren't as important. It's just trying to understand what may have been the instating factor, and then now we know what tools would be the best suited for treating the type, that type of tinnitus. Working backwards isn't always the best because I've had patients who are so fixated on identifying what brought on their tinnitus that they're not able to move forward because they are just consistently wondering what it was. And even if we can identify with 100% certainty what was the instigating cause of tinnitus, it doesn't mean that we can go back and undo it. It's not as though you can be given some kind of antidote that will help undo everything that's happened to this point. So knowing more or less what caused it or what is still causing it is important, but it's not absolutely necessary to know the precise moment or the single event that brought it on. So now I hope you have a better understanding of the three main causes of tinnitus, cochlear, central, and somatic. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to comment below. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please subscribe now.